Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at adding and subtracting numbers written in scientific notation. Before we get to the adding and subtracting, let's just review what is scientific notation. So a number is written in scientific notation if it's of the form a times x to the n, where a is a number between 1 and 10. We say it can include 1, but it does not include 10. So basically what that means is that it has one single digit before the decimal point. The n is an integer. An integer just means it's, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. If the given number is between 0 and 1, then the negative, the exponent is negative, because what that's doing is it's dividing by 10. So we're taking a number between 1 and 10, we're going to divide it by 10 a bunch of times, that's going to get that number to become a decimal. If the number is bigger than 1, then the exponent is positive. So if the number is 17, well, in scientific notation, it would be written as 1.7 times 10 to the 1. So we would want to multiply the 1.7 by 10 to get that number to be bigger. And in very, very, very rare cases, if the number equals 1, then the exponent is 0. So if the number happens to be between 1 and 10 itself, right, if it's the number 7, we would write 7 in scientific notation as 7 times 10 to the 0. Pretty rare that we would want to write the number 7 in scientific notation, but we can, and that's what it would look like. Okay, so when can we add two numbers? This is any two numbers. We can add two numbers if they're of the same unit, right? So I can add 7 feet plus 4 feet, and if I add those together, I would get 11 feet. That's good. We like that. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense is to say, okay, I have 7 feet plus 4 donkeys. What? What do feet have to do with donkeys? Nothing. It wouldn't make sense to add those numbers because feet and donkeys are not the same unit. That number 11 would be meaningless in this situation because it doesn't mean anything. So we want to make sure that the numbers are of the same unit. We also want to make sure that they are like terms. We might be familiar with like terms in two contexts. One is if we have variables, right? So if we have 7f plus 4f, we can add these two values together and get 11f. If we have 7f plus 4z, we cannot add these together. We would just have to leave it 7f plus 4z because they are not like terms. Well, with scientific notation, the power of 10 is kind of like our variable-ish, sort of. So if the powers of 10 match, then we can add the two decimal parts of the numbers, right? So if we have, for example, 7 times 10 to the 5th plus 4 times 10 to the 5th, we're allowed to add these decimal numbers together because they're both of this uh, unit 10 to the fifth. We'd be able to add these and we would get 11 times 10 to the fifth. If they don't have the same power of 10, 7 times 10 to the fifth plus 4 times 10 to the twelfth, we can't add the 7 plus the 4 because they're not like terms, right? This it would be like saying this is x and this would be y. They're not the same we cannot combine them. So we're going to look at adding or subtracting numbers that are written in scientific notation, and there are two options that we might go about doing this. Option one is to rewrite the numbers as their standard form equivalents. So writing a number in standard form, like I use the example 7 times 10 to the fifth, writing this in standard form means actually doing this multiplication. So 10 to the fifth, that's like moving the decimal point of the 7 five times to the right, that would also be equivalent of adding five zeros here since we don't have a decimal. So the equivalent of seven times 10 to the fifth is 700,000. Then what we would do is we would add the numbers as their standard form equivalents because they would both have a unit quote unquote of one. And then we would put the number, the answer back in scientific notation. So for example, if we have 6.2 times 10 to the seventh plus 4.01 times 10 to the sixth, we can't add the decimals right now because 10 to the 7th is not the same as 10 to the 6th. They're different units. We can't add them. What we can do is write them in, as their standard form equivalent. So 6.2 times 10 to the 7th, that would be moving the decimal point 7 places to the right. The decimal point is right here between the 6 and the 2. If I move it 7 times, it takes 1 to get around the 2, and then it would be 6 more times after that. So I'm going to write out two, 6, 2, and then 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, giving me 62 million. 4.01 times 10 to the sixth, that's moving the decimal point, which is right here, six places to the right. So that'd be one, two, 
I still need to move it four more times to get to that six, so I'm gonna add four zeros at the end of this number, plus four, zero, one, one, two, three, four. So now what we're doing is we're adding 62 million to 4 million 10,000. And when I add those, we add by the place values, right? So if I wanna line this up, it would look like this. And we would go to add and we would get 66 million 10,000. So this is the standard form equivalent, but generally when the numbers are written in scientific notation, we also want the answer to be in scientific notation. So what's this number in scientific notation? Well, we would move the decimal point three, six, seven times to get it back there. That would be 6.601 times 10 to the seventh. So go from standard form into scientific notation, move that decimal back, create a number between one and 10. Option number two, that was kind of a lot of work what we just did. So what we could do instead, what we could do is rewrite the numbers so that they have the same power of 10. Now it's really important to keep in mind, if you choose this method, you always want to match the term that has the largest power of 10. So in that previous example, what we want to do, if we're going to use this method, is we want to take this seven is bigger than six. So we would want to rewrite this to have an exponent so that it says 10 to the seventh. What does that mean we need to do? This gets a little bit sneaky, but these two things are being multiplied to each other. So if I multiply one of the two factors by something, I have to divide the other factor by that same thing to balance it all out. You've seen this before. Uh, when we multiply or divide numbers in scientific notation, you've had to use this trick before, so it might be familiar. So I need this to increase by one power of 10 because I need this to be a seven. If this factor increases by a power of 10, this factor needs to lose a power of 10. I need to divide by a power of 10. So we're gonna have 6.2 times 10 to the seventh plus, now I'm dividing by a power of 10. What is that doing? That's moving the decimal point one place to the left. That would give me 0 0.401 times 10 to the seventh. Now that they have the same unit, I can go ahead and add the two decimal parts together. 6.2 plus 0 0.401 would give me 6.601 times 10 to the seventh. That, that unit will stay the same, right? Just like if that was just an X, this would stay 6.601 X. The unit stays the same. So these are the two methods. Hopefully one of these you like, doesn't matter which one, but my recommendation is always pick one and use that one every single time. Let's look at a few examples and I'll kind of switch between the two so that maybe if you're still on the fence, maybe I can help you make a decision. Okay, we wanna add these. We have 5.03 times 10 to the negative eighth plus two times 10 to the negative sixth. I think for this one, this one looks tough because if we were to write these in standard form, they're going to be mega decimals anyway. Maybe we should go with option number two. Let's rewrite them so that they have the same power of 10. Which power of 10 is bigger, negative eight or negative six? The answer is negative six. Negative six is bigger than negative eight. So what do I need here to turn negative eight into a negative six? I need to add two. When I'm adding two to an exponent, that really means I'm adding two powers of 10. So what are two powers of 10? That's 10 times 10, that's 100. If I'm increasing this one by two powers of 10, this factor, what do I need to do to this factor? I need to divide it by two powers of 10. I need to divide this factor by 100 to match out the fact that I just multiplied this one by 100, right? We have to keep things balanced. Dividing by 100 means I'm moving the decimal point two places to the left. So I'm gonna get 0 0.0503 times 10 to the negative six. So this weird number here and this number up here are equivalent. Now we're adding to this, 2 times 10 to the negative 6. Now we're able to combine because they have the same unit. This decimal, 0 0.0503 plus 2, will just be 2.0503. Keep that unit the same, times 10 to the negative 6. And voila, we have answered the first question. What do you think of that option? Okay, well in the next example, in case you didn't like it, we'll look at option 1. So option one, we're gonna take these two, 8.002 times 10 to the 10th minus 3.6 times 10 to the 9th. We're gonna first write these numbers in standard form. 
This wants me to move the decimal point of this decimal 10 times to the right because this is a positive. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then I still need seven more. So I'm going to add seven zeros behind that two. So we have eight, zero, zero, two. Now I'm adding seven zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're subtracting from that 3.6 times 10 to the ninth. So 10 to the ninth, that's taking this decimal, moving it 10 place, that nine places to the right, one to get around the six, and then eight more zeros. So I need to add eight more zeros. I think that needs to start here. So we're gonna do three, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're ready to subtract. So when we subtract, we wanna make sure we're subtracting. Usually we start from the right, so we can have a bunch of zeros at the end of this number because these are really big numbers. And then the two minus zero is zero. Uh-oh, we're gonna to have to do some regrouping here. Nine, so then we have 10 minus six is four and nine minus three, oops, let's not forget seven, is six and then we have a seven. Okay, so we end up with this number here, which would be 76 million. 420,000, uh, whoa, sorry, it's the 20, 76 billion, 420 million. We wanna put this answer back into scientific notation and what we should expect, this should have an exponent of 10 because we didn't lose any places here. So it should have an exponent of 10. That'll be a nice check for us. We're gonna move the decimal. It's gonna be three, six, nine, and 10. Yep, and we end up with 7.642 times 10 to the 10th. So with adding and subtracting, it's kind of like a nice little thing. It should end up matching the largest exponent that we're given anyway, one way or the other. Now, with subtraction, it might not necessarily, and even with addition, right? Because if they were really close together, we might have, lose a, a power of 10. So we just wanna be really careful, but I feel pretty good because we did end up with 10 to the 10th. In our final example, we have a lot going on here. Which method should we use? I think we should use option two. I kind of like option two, it's kind of growing on me. So between negative four, negative two, and negative five, which of those is the biggest? That's right, negative two. So we're gonna leave this one alone. We're gonna rewrite this one to be negative two. So what do I need? I need two more powers of 10. If I need two more powers of 10 in this factor, what do I need to do to this factor? I need to divide it by two powers of 10, and two powers of 10 is 100. So I'm gonna rewrite this, it's gonna be 0 0.054 because that's moving the decimal two places to the left, times 10, and this becomes 10 to the negative two. Okay, so now I'm ready to see, this is gonna be an awkward subtraction, isn't it? I am subtracting from this 9.3 times 10 to the negative two. And then lastly, let's just go ahead and fix this one while we're at it. I need three more powers of 10 here because I need to get this to negative two. So I need to add three more powers of 10, which means I need to divide this by three powers of 10, which would be 1000. Dividing by 1000 is gonna move this decimal point three places to the left, one, two, three. That's gonna give me 0 0.00601 times 10 to the negative two. Okay, so now we can do this in either order, although we should just go from left to right because the two operations that we're focusing on are the subtraction and addition. With this subtraction, I have 0 0.054 minus 9.3. It's a little awkward to do it this way, so I think we're gonna have to turn this around, right? Because when we subtract, we're gonna subtract the, it's like adding a positive integer and a negative integer. We actually want the bigger value up on top. And we're gonna add some zeros here. And now we're ready to go ahead and say 10 minus four is six, nine minus five is four, 2 minus 0 is 2, 9 minus 0 is 9. But this is negative. So we have negative 9.246 times 10 to the negative 2. And we're adding to this 0 0.00601 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, but now again, we're trying to add two integers that have opposite signs. One's negative and one's positive. So even though we're supposed to be adding, we really subtract because those are equivalent operations. So I'm gonna go down here and say 9.246 minus 0 0.00601. Add some zeros here. Whoops, we're gonna to have to regroup here. And we have 10 minus one is nine. Nine minus zero is nine. Uh-oh, gonna to have to regroup again. 15 minus six is nine. That's a lot of nines. And we have three, two point, okay. So we end up with 9.23999. And 
but not just that, right? That's just the decimal part. What is the units on this? What is that power of 10 again? That's right, it's 10 to the negative two. So this is our end all be all final answer for this. We did it. These have been examples of adding and subtracting numbers that are written in scientific notation. We looked at two different options. One is to write them into standard form, add or subtract, and then convert back into scientific notation. And the other is to leave them in scientific notation, but get the units of 10 to match up by multiplying and dividing the factors by powers of 10. Thank you for stopping.